Welcome to the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel. In today's video, we look deeply into three self-editing techniques. Obviously, there are many more than three, but these three are a start for a short video. For those of you who do not know me, I am Denis Ledoux, author of the classic granddaddy of memoir writing books, Turning Memories into Memoirs, and I am the founder of the Memoir Network. I have been a memoir and fiction editor since the 1990s, and in that time, I have worked with hundreds and perhaps thousands of memoir manuscripts. A few manuscripts have come to me requiring only slight tweaking. The texts are clear, coherent, and concise. They are nearly ready for publication. Their authors have created an interesting and well-crafted piece of writing. Too many other manuscripts, however, have come to me at a stage that reflects tired and exasperated writers. These writers seem to be saying, oh, I'm so ready to have this writing over with. Writing, of course, can be a long and tedious task after the initial rush of creativity and enthusiasm. Oh, this is so wonderful. But once the glow fades, Pegasus drops the once enchanted writer from the skies and horrors. The writer now has to mount a pack mule to trudge the slopes of rewriting. But I want to do inspired writing, the writer bemoans, not pick and shovel work. But pick and shovel work cannot be evaded. Every writer, you, must eventually take up trudging the slopes of rewriting and of self-editing, but not to worry. I have many tips for self-editing techniques that will help you to make short shrift of this task. Rather than write superficially about them in the short space here, I will group my tips into several videos. These are easy tasks that client might undertake both to the great benefits of their manuscripts and to the relief of their billfolds. Please continue to check with the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel for additional videos on self-editing. Here are my first three action steps for better self-editing. Action step one, implement the 10% rule. Every manuscript can be improved by applying the 10% rule, and I mean every manuscript. The 10% rule calls for deleting at least one-tenth of any text, 10%. It's a cinch to calculate the number of words that need to be excised. Find the number of words in your document and move the decimal point up one digit to the left. If your memoir manuscript is 70,000 words long, 10% adds up to 7,000 words. Your goal becomes to eliminate 7,000 words and end up with a manuscript of 63,000 words. Now, this is a rule of thumb, and it, of course, has to be implemented for every manuscript. But yes, you can do the 10% rule. Yes, your manuscript will be the better for it. Now, I learned this well when I was doing freelance newspaper work. One day, my editor called to ask me to upload my latest brilliant manuscript. When I had done so, she said, doesn't your article begin on paragraph four? Well, I thought, I'm into this one. She can't get me here. I've even taught the 10% rule in my workshops. I began to reread my piece. The first paragraphs were Indeed, stellar, full of deathless prose. But when I got to the fourth paragraph, it became clear the first paragraphs were stylistic play, while the gist of the article began in paragraph four. Out went the first three paragraphs. If my writing had been an airplane taken off on a naval carrier, I would have dropped into the ocean so slow was my launch. 
just as an airplane must take off immediately, so must your story, vignettes, and chapters. The 10% rule is often about beginnings and endings. Unlike an essay, a memoir doesn't start by revealing to the reader what the memoir will contain and then presenting what it contains. And lastly, end with repeating what the memoir contains. This is essay writing. Your memoir needs drama, not explanation. Please see my several videos on drama in your memoir in the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel. The big question to ask yourself is, is this piece of writing, this word, this phrase, this paragraph necessary to the story? Can I understand the story without it? If it is not necessary, excise it. As so many professional writers have enjoined, kill your darlings. It's always, always good advice. Action step number two, avoid redundancies. Redundancies are two or more words that mean the same thing. Here are egregious examples, round circles, dead corpses, and first beginnings. Only the second words in the previous examples are necessary. That is circles, corpses, and beginnings. One of my horrors is I personally, yuck. Why not just say I? I did this, not I personally did this. You will be surprised at how many redundancies appear in your writing. Less obvious are redundancies such as, as a young girl, I love grade school. The redundancy here is, of course, when you write, I love grade school, you are describing your experience as a young girl. For people, few people, in fact, attend grade school as adults. The phrase, as a young girl, is therefore redundant. Reread your texts for both the evident redundancies, such as very unique, which is not any more unique than unique, nor is very sincere more sincere than sincere, and the hidden redundancies, because he was poor, he had no money. He had no money would be sufficient here. Eliminating redundancies is, of course, another application of the 10% rule. Economical prose is satisfying to read. Action step number three, beware of I remember or any of its synonyms. Another self-editing technique to implement in a memoir is to use I remember very, very sparingly. If you are writing a life story, a memoir, obviously you are remembering the story. You don't need to tell the reader that. Autobiographical writing is entirely about remembering. The use of I remember can, however, be valid as it can sometimes add meaning. Here's from a piece I wrote. As I stood at the edge of the road, looking at the house where I had grown up, I remembered the day when my grandmother had planted the nut trees. My brother and my sisters and I had stood around her as she worked, but what it was exactly I was remembering, I was not sure, other than the heat of the day and understanding that there was something she needed from me but I could not remember what it was she wanted. Now, obviously, this uh, sort of lead into a story points to writing that will be about memory. The writer will employ as many bits of memory as he can to reconstruct the story to arrive at learning what it was he did not remember. In this story, we will likely read about the process of remembering and perhaps about its role in identity. In this case, it is completely appropriate for the writer to use the phrase, I remember. The same is not true if one writes, I remember how my grandmother had a green stuffed chair in the living room. He 
here most likely, it would be better to write, my grandmother had a green stuffed chair in the living room, omitting, I remember. The above lead paragraph is also an example of how a memoir does not have to be linear. This happened and that, ha that happened. As you edit your story in preparation for sending it to a professional editor, ask yourself if you have exploited all possibilities for making the story interesting to the reader. More on this in a sequel video. Stay tuned. There are many analogously unnecessary phrases that can be eliminated, such as in conclusion, let me start with, in other words. As an author, you do well to suppose your reader is intelligent enough to make the connections without you having to point them out. I will not delve into proofreading here, that is spelling or grammar, as these are really for a later stage in the process of preparing a manuscript for publication. Before you engage an editor or a proofreader, do necessarily rewrite and save on fees. What are your favorite must not overlook self-editing techniques that pertain to words and phrases? Please share below any self-editing suggestions that you have implemented to save fees and, of course, to improve your text. If you would like to explore receiving help with your manuscript on any aspect of memoir writing, know that we offer a 30-minute complimentary get-to-know-you coaching consultation. Oh, and uh, before you go, here's a bonus link for you, a link to our video, Write the Best Memoir Title. Well, you're self-editing, why not look at your title also? And remember, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yard by yard, it's hard. Good luck writing your memoir. The videos that we post on the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel are just one of the many ways we can help people write better memoir. I'd like to take just a few moments to share more of what the Memoir Network can offer you by way of partnering with you to write and publish your memoir. Our free membership program, My Memoir Education, offers you access to e-courses, e-books, videos, and more. We have had thousands of people benefit from the free My Memoir Education to write their memoirs, and we hope you will become a member too. Our blog contains over 500 in-depth posts on different aspects of memoir writing, and it too is free. Come on over and uh, pick and choose what you need. While free content can be very helpful, there comes a time when you need more focus and more mentoring than you can get from free. We offer coaching, editing, whether copy editing, content editing, or developmental editing, ghostwriting, and book production. Our website features many of our clients' book covers and testimonials. Come and check us out. We also have a number of programs you can purchase. The Memorable Story is a 10-module home study program on every aspect of memoir writing. It provides university-level mentoring. The Inspired Memoir Writer is a group coaching program. You meet with fellow writers over a period of 10 sessions. We also offer Jumpstart Memoir Professional Packages, which are designed for people who would like to help others write their memoir. If you're interested in knowing more, please feel free to call us or email us at info at Thanks, and uh, keep writing.